This is the Friday, June 12th, 2015 version of the Market Plus segment. Joining us now is John Roach. John, welcome back. Thanks, Mike. We're glad to have you with us. Let's talk about the cotton market. We didn't, we didn't cover that on the show. What are your thoughts there? The cotton market's really been going sideways. Um, we've had uh, uh, difficulty on the demand side of it and, and plentiful surpluses. Uh, and then uh, here this spring, we've had some planting problems and, and with all the difficulties they've had down south. So, uh, but we've really just been in a narrow, relatively narrow range range, uh, we think that probably continues here. Okay. Now, on the program, we talked a little bit about marketing our new crop corn. We didn't touch much on the old crop corn market. And Pat from Twitter here, Pat K. Wolf, is curious, by what date should we have all our 2014 corn sold? Our normal rule is the 4th of July. Um, we, we, our theory is that a lot of people go out over the 4th of July and look at the crops. And if the crops look good, uh, then it's really hard to get the market to uh, do much improvement. Uh, if they look bad, uh, then you are starting off with some sort of a, of a weather market usually by about that time. Uh, so uh, we think that's sort of the deadline. But what, what, we, what we really think is that, that you really should be down to small percentages of your crop left at this time. Uh, we think that uh, you have to make sales. We actually have a selling season that we, that we look at sales March, April, May, June, July. We call it our selling season. So we want to make sales in March, April, May, June, July. And so when we get to the July, we're wanting to be almost out or in the small end of it, unless we have a reason to be more positive and quite frankly, this year we really don't. Now, given that uh, that 4th of July, crop check and weather, do you look to have a percentage of your new crop corn marketed by 4th of July as well then too? We normally do. Uh, we normally uh, will suggest that every time we have a sell signal through that marketing season, and we normally target four of those sell signals, uh, we would like to sell on each one of those a fourth of the bushels you want sold before harvest time. Uh, we think everybody needs to have a percentage of the crop that they want to get sold before harvest, and that needs to be relatively consistent. Um, your storage is relatively consistent, and so your percentage of crop that you can hold uh, is, is limited uh, by that, and so we think you have to sell on the balance. This year, however, we've sold slower than normal. Um, we've been trying to figure out ways to hold grain inventory on into 2016. We've advised corn producers to sell on the rallies and come back and buy futures for spring of 16 on the dips. Uh, we think corn will be higher priced next year, and so we're trying to figure out how to hold as much new crop into that period as we can. When that demand is fully taken off and we're really looking at potentially stronger buyers out there. We think it's a combination of demand and combination uh, of give up on supply. Farmers can only plant $4 corn for about so long before some of those acres are just not going to get planted. And we've seen the acreage be reduced over the last uh, three years. And we, th we think next spring at this time, we're going to be looking, if prices are where they are today, we're going to be looking at even fewer corn acres. And now that leads right into the next question. We've talked a lot about selling our corn crops, but for our end users, our feed consumers on the other side of the table, looking at higher prices in 2016, John Roach, what's your advice on buying corn? I think that the, the prices you're able to buy corn for for the next 90 days will be very good prices when you're feeding that corn in January, February, March of 2016. So I think that what's important to do is to, is to look at your feed needs carefully and be willing to buy the cheaper markets here during uh, this summer season and be in a position to have everything, get it all done uh, at, at harvest time. Last year, everybody waited for harvest and a lot of people didn't get it. They waited a little too long. The next thing the market went up, they waited waited for a dip, the market was 50 cents higher before they really, uh, it, got, it got away from them. That'll happen again this year in our opinion. So are you a buyer out into first quarter 16? Yes. Okay, so buy out on these yes. lows as far out as you're comfortable buying. Do you I, have a set end date? I, I think you could just keep right on going. Just keep on adding inventory as long as inventory is cheap on out forward. When you're buying grain below the cost of production, you're on the right side of it. All right. Now, our, our next two questions are related to the USDA report, uh, the WASD that came out earlier this week. DW in Tennessee has a question that, uh, that a lot of folks are, are asking and would like your opinion. Are USDA reports relevant any longer? 
with the spread of technology and the way we can get information out, do we still need the reports from the USDA? Absolutely. Uh, really, we, we, we count on the government uh, to act sort of like the, the, the dealer in a card game, to, to make sure that we, every once in a while, we balance the pot. Let's make sure everything here, we're all understanding what the situation is. And the, uh, for most growers, it's hard for them to have that kind of information, uh, whereas all of the bigger uh, users and, and um, traders, they all have uh, some sources of that kind of information. And so they'll have the information and the average grower won't have it. And so it puts them at a disadvantage. So I, I think that farmers want the government's numbers once a month uh, and respect those numbers, as does the whole marketplace. That's right. We've seen that time and time again with limit moves one way or the other after these reports have come out. As the market has to adjust to what the fundamentals look like today. Certainly. Now the next question is from Phil in Ontario, Canada, and Phil is curious, how should farmers anticipate changing acreage and yield numbers in the June 30th USDA report? How can we hedge accordingly? Well, I'm not sure um, that, um, that we have an answer yet. I mean, I, th I think we're all um, uh, trying to figure that out. We, we polled our uh, uh, subscribers and, and, uh, and, and we had 1,800 responses as of today. Uh, and uh, we think that the corn and bean acres are both going to be pulled down. That's what our subscribers are telling us, that they didn't get everything planted. Um, and we have some who have excellent crops and we have others that have, have, don't have it planted yet. And so uh, uh, I'm not sure how to get you lined up for the June 30th report. Um, not sure what good advice is for that. But I know what to do and that is I'm going to be there willing to sell most all the rallies that we have from now until harvest time. And on the flip side, for users, I'm going to be there ready to buy the dips on the bottom. So, in other words, I think this trading area that we're in, we will have ups and downs and opportunities on both sides. Not enough value or, or risk potential in that June 30th report to go out and spend some money on a short-dated option of some kind or a, a risk management tool like that, do you think? If, if, you're, if, you're, um, uh, if that's a tool that you're comfortable using and, and, uh, and, and uh, you're, you're saying, okay, now how do I use it? Uh, I think you have to look at this week and say, you know, we made peaks this week. I ought to be buying puts in here to hold, to carry through that period of time in case this weather improves a little bit. Because we're still dealing with a weather problem and weather problems can disappear. And if it disappeared, Prices are going to be cheaper, and so the put would be the thing that I'd want to have. All right. Well, John, I want to thank you so much for joining us this thank week. Thank you very much, Mike. Good to have you on the program. And thanks to all of you for sending in all of your questions via Facebook and Twitter. Please continue to do so, and we will get expert analysis right to you. Thanks for watching, and have a great week.